Hello, my name is Gideon Shabib. I'm a level designer at cohort in cohort 16 at the SMU Guildhall, and I'm here to take you through step three of creating a menu system for UDK. Uh, we're using Flash CS 5.5 Professional. We're going to be importing into UDK May 2011 edition, and this assumes that you've gone through steps one and two, creating assets for Flash and setting up Flash for use with Scale Form. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to do is open up an ActionScript 2.0 file. Uh, while ActionScript 3.0 is now supported by Scaleform, the documentation on it is fairly sparse and 2.0 seems to be a little bit more reliable at the moment. So as we start off here, um, not a lot you needed to set up except for verifying that your published settings are set correctly for import to UDK by having Flash Player 8 and ActionScript 2.0 selected. Now that we know that that's all right, we know that our extensions are working. So the scale form launcher is over here, it's mounted on the console, and the media effects tester are functioning. So once we have this open, we can go to our file where we're going to retrieve our click component template from by going to open and navigating to UDK, find your current edition of UDK, go into development, flash, click, click components, and finally, come down to the Click Components FLA file. Open that up while leaving your main document open. It's going to give you an error about embedded text. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fix that later, but for right now, just click OK. As that loads in, you'll see that the library fills up with a number of different components down here in the side. And you'll also see that it has an example of each of the menu components here on the center stage. If we test this media effects, you can see that there's going to be quite a few of inter interactive elements on the screen, but not all of them are going to be fully functional because there's no code associated with them. Uh, no errors over here on the side, which is always a good thing, uh, but we have buttons that click and react, but they don't do anything. No commands sent to the console, checkboxes, drop down menus, hypothetically would be filled with as many items as you'd feel the need to uh, have available. And then we have uh, scroll boxes, and editable fields. So this all seems to be in order. So we'll go ahead and close that. We know that we've loaded the correct file. So for this the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to start off with the button. Uh, go ahead and click the button in the library. Right click and copy. And move over to your file. Go onto the stage and paste the object. Again, with the uh, font error, go ahead and click OK. Now that we have the button on the stage, um, we're gonna start making it look like and do what we want it to do. So before we go any further, it's a good idea to save your work. So if we save this, the appropriate place to save your files so that they'll be loaded into the game and easy to import is to go to UDK game, flash, create a package folder, and then create a group folder for your, for your specific items. Call this one click example. I'm going to show you how to make a button work functionally with UDK, but uh, the steps are going to be fairly similar on how to get any slider, checkbox, or dynamic text field to work. So first off, we have our button, which doesn't do anything but say text field. Uh, if we launch this in the media player, you're going to get a couple errors that are going to show up. One, uh, the button isn't going to respond, and you could call this an error or by design but it looks like a default button, and what we want is a customized button. So we'll show you how to skin that as well. To get some customized text, uh, select the layer that has the button on it, and we'll rename that to Buttons. Select the button itself, and scroll down in the Properties window to where it says Label, and enter in some text. We're going to make this launch the game, so we'll go ahead and call this the Start. So this text here under label is going to show you what's actually going to appear over the button in game. But for our purposes, we also need to name it inside of Flash. So we'll call it Start BTN. Testing again, we have a new error. The font is horridly not correct. To remedy this, we're going to double click on the instance of the button, unlock the text field, select the text field icon, or instance, 
select the font that we want to represent in game. Let's go with Arial, fairly common. Change it to regular. Make it a little bit larger here. And we'll center it to the field. Let's make it black so it'll pop out a little bit more. And now that we've done that, we need to embed the font into the SWF file. So we're going to call this my UDK font. And we're going to include, we use both uppercase and lowercase. If you did include numerics or punctuation or for some reason foreign characters, you need to include each of these individually uh, when exporting for uh, ActionScript into UDK. So now that you have that set up, go to export for ActionScript and make sure that it has the same identifier as the name that you gave it in the other other window. Click OK. Let's test it again. Now I have a larger text field. It's in black and it's showing up with the correct uh, correct glyphs for each letter. So that's that's progress. Background's still a little different than what we'd like. So now that we have that set up, let's prettify it by adding on our custom graphics into the background. Uh, if you followed step one of our video series, uh, you'll probably have these images already available in the correct format. So I'm going to go ahead and import these right now by removing the current button field, adding a new layer, and doing file import, import to stage, or control R if you're a fan of shortcuts. Once we're here, we need to navigate to the correct PSD, open up the PSD. As you select each element, make sure you say bitmap image with editable layer styles and change it to a lossless image. Do this for each of the layers. And make sure that down here under convert layers to, you're set to keyframes instead of flash layers. If flash layers is selected, each of the frames or each of the layers from Photoshop will be put into a new layer in flash. What we want is for them to all be in the same layer. So everything looks in order. Click OK. It created a new layer that we can now pull down to the bottom and clear our old layer out. Select the individual frame that you want to move. Click and hold on it after it's been selected and drag it to the appropriate frame field. And if you look down, we now have a button that changes as we scroll through. All right, so now that we have that set in place, it looks like it's a little off-center. Uh, while each element is centered to itself, uh, centered to the rest of the layers, they're not centered to the text. So what we need to do is enable multiple frame editing by selecting this button here below the timeline. And then you get to set the range at which you're editing these. So let's go ahead and select the entire active time frame. And we'll select everything in this layer by clicking this layer. Now that we have all of these elements, we can click and drag them to move them around. And if you need specific uh, adjustments, you can use the arrow keys to slightly adjust your group symbols that you're moving. So let's put that center of the text in the center of the button. And make sure that after you're done with this, you unselect multiple frame editing to make sure that you're only working on the specific frames that you mean to be editing. And then we'll remove these extra keyframes by right clicking and remove frames. So now that we have all that in place, let's go back to our main scene. And we'll add a new layer called BG for background. And I'm gonna control R to import to stage. And we're gonna select the menu background and fit that into the window. If you need to readjust your transformation, you can move that center point to any location and it will make its transformations around that point. OK, 
Okay, so it looks like we have everything in order now. A little bit easier to see our button. And now you can see moving the button around, the text field is going to stay attached to it. So let's put this up by little guy's hand. And let's test out the video. Oh, doesn't seem to be working. The button's there, but the background isn't. Reason being is that we did not make the same adjustments to the background layer that we did to each individual button field. So if we come over the background here, we can go to properties, change this to allow for smoothing, and to turn it to a lossless PNG. If you remember the lossless option that we chose from the button settings. Again, export for action script, and remove the extension, but make sure that the identifier is the same as the options title, but with no extension. Click OK. Test it again. And now we're at, starting to see the formation of our menu. I'm going to take a slight break here, and we'll come back and show you how to add functionality to this button system and how to prepare it for import into UDK.